Hello everyone, how are you all? We are already live over here. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Nagsiri, how are you? I'm good. How are you, ma'am? I'm uh, absolutely all right. So I'm actually very excited for the session today because we I'm going uh, I'm doing this session first time with Nagsiri and we are going to discuss three top countries of the world, Ireland, UK, and Canada. So I guess we already have started having some audience right over here. So we definitely would ask them to be more active, ask right. us a lot of. So I'm actually very excited for the session today because we are doing, uh, I'm doing this session. So uh, we would want everyone to be more active uh, and uh, ask your questions in the chats here in the live chat so that we can take up your queries. So today's session, can you just uh, tell us something about you, Nakshiri? Hello everyone, I'm really excited to answer all your questions today and have a discussion with you all regarding the countries Ireland, UK and Canada. Myself, Nagasiri Nagaraj, I'm in this industry from past six years and today I'm here to answer all your queries. So I'm really excited guys, hope you are also equally excited. Yes, if you are excited, type excited in the chat so that we know that you are all here. Hello, Gagan. Hello, Praveen. Hello, Kailash. Hello, Pratima. So we have already started having a lot of students asking, uh, uh, being uh, here live. So this is yeah. Manisha Angre and I'm going to host, I'm the moderator of the session. So whatever questions you have for, for ma'am, I'm going to take them over for you all. So first of all, let me know what is your uh, desired country, Gagan, Praveen, Kailash, Pratima. Yes, let us know what is your desired destination, your country. I and if you have already thought of certain universities and colleges in these countries. Hello, Deepak. Hello, Ansar. Let us know. And let us know if you are real, what is what is it that you are looking forward to? I'm here. We are here to answer your questions. Yes. And yes, if guys. you have uh, you want to study in Germany and Norway, UK. Deepak wants to go to UK. Gagan wants to go to UK. Anima is back here. Hi, Anima. Good. Anima is one of our students for the last for a long, long time, and she's been here for all our sessions. That's Hello, amazing. Praveen, Pratama, UK, Canada, Norway. Okay, we are also getting questions for Norway today. Let's see if we are able to take them. But guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would first request you all to subscribe so that you don't miss out on to any of our videos and you know that Leap Scholar comes up with such informative sessions. So please do that. And if you have not subscribed to our Telegram channel, then what are you all waiting for? Go to Telegram and find out Leap Scholar Study Abroad Aspirant. This is where you need to go and you need to join our Telegram community where you will find all the information and all the updates related to universities, and scholarships and education loan, visa and PR. Okay, Germany, UBC, Waterloo, Concordia, I know South Korea, okay, wherever you want to go. But you need to subscribe to uh, Telegram channel so that you get all the updates for all the countries that you are asking for. So have you subscribed? If you have all subscribed, say yay. Say yay. Type yay so that we know that you have done it. Yes, Pratima, bachelor's in pharmacy. Shraddha wants to go to Ireland. Shriya wants to go to Canada. Yes, we are. We are. We are going to discuss everything. We are going to discuss everything. Done. Done, done, done. So let's go back to where we were. So let's go back to our main topic, Ireland, UK, Canada and topics. Yes, Nakshri, we can start the session. You can let us know what is the session all about. Yes. Guys, today uh, I'll be sharing you information, important information regarding the funds. What all funds you can use for your visas for all these three countries, Ireland, UK and Canada, right? So what are the entry requirements? How you have to prepare all your documentation, the cost of education required, and how is the application process taken care? Everything in detail, end-to-end -end information and the major, uh, major information on your uh, funds. Okay, so first uh, we are Ireland, UK, Canada and topic. Okay, these are the uh, uh, 
uh, countries that we are covering up. So first of all, before you go there, what is the first thing that you like, of course, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when we talk about all of these countries? What is the, what is the, what is it? What is it? It you is type it on the chat box. Yes. Let us know from the chat. What is it that you would want to know? You have thought of a destination. You know that you are going to travel tomorrow. So first you start packing up your bags. So first of all, you decide you need your clothes, you need your woolens, you need your food. What is it that you need? So that is your what is it? IELTS band. That is, yes, Shriya, you're correct. We, you, we need to know the requirements of the countries that you want to go to. So what are the requirements? Uh, requirements. Okay. You can yes. detail up. Uh, Nagshiri will tell them yes, about yes. more. Tuition fee, finance. They're talking about finance, tuition fee, opportunities, documents. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. All yes. are really very important. But on top of that, what is more important than all these things, right? So IELTS, your International English Language Testing System, right? So you need to score around 6.5 overall, no band less than 6 or 6.5. This is the basic necessity. For few of the universities, they also require 7, 7.5 as per the university requirement. But this is the basic in uh, IELTS band which you have to score, right? All your English speaking, listening, writing, reading, skills will be tested. As India is not an English speaking country and if you are applying for an English speaking country, this is the major certification required. So you have to hurry up and start with your IELTS coaching right away if you have not yet started, right? So whoever have started just can say yes in the chat box who are ready. How with many of course. you have already started? Ma'am, Nagshri is asking that how many of you have already started with your IELTS preparation? Type started in your chat boxes. But by the time they all are answering, I want to study USA in civil. Of course, you can. You're going to Canada for biotechnology. Wonderful. I want to all, uh, I want to ask that not less than six in each and 6.5 overall as per university. So what is not less than six in each? Will a 5.5 any, in any one particular module, will they be able to take admission in any of these countries? Uh, very few universities as per their requirement. But for the visas, if the students are having six in each band, the visa success rate will also be high. So just aim for a six in each band, 6.5 overall. That will be a pretty good score. We are not taking a chance anywhere. Right. So if even if you are an average student, you are not a uh, you are not especially not uh, not in the subject, but at least in English, if you feel that you may not be able to score a seven band or an eight band, that's completely fine. But you should make a note of this that not less than six in any one of the uh, uh, band, modules. Yeah. So that means you have to aim for a higher band for every module, and six point five cannot be achieved if all your average bands are six. So at least one of them should be 6.5 or more so all those who have not yet started your preparation do join our IS classes which are equally uh, uh, effective and you can start your uh, journey to your dream destination from your IELTS course right so once your IELTS scores are done what is next required is the set of documents guys so it is a general documentation which is required for all the universities with your field applications, we need to have your passport, your 10th, 12th, and your bachelor semester-wise mark sheets, your degree completion certificates, transcripts, and also your IELTS scorecard, right? So all these things are basic necessity requirement. Apart from this, we'll also go ahead with the important documentation in the further slide. Right. So there are a couple of questions. Meanwhile, we'll take them also along with them. Rutuja is asking that I'm currently studying in 12th class. Both mm -hmm. take place usually in February. So when should I start preparing? So we can start the application process nine to 10 months before the intake because most of the top universities start their application process a year before. So your documentation, everything has to be in place. 11 to 12 months before. And as per the deadlines, we will fill your applications and submit. 
Okay. Uh, uh, Nagshiri, uh, could you be a little louder? I think the volume is slightly low. So if you could be a little louder. Yeah, right. Okay, yes. Great. Okay. Uh, so I think, Rutuja, your, uh, your question has been answered. Now, uh, is scoring six easy? Hush, definitely it is easy with the right strategies. Six, what you can even score an eight band. First of all, you need to know what exam is like and how you will be able to score them. So yes, definitely it is easy. Uh, uh, okay, Ajay Kumar is asking, he needs to connect with the counselor and have been trying for the last two months. Yes, please connect. Yes, Ajay, do let us know. We'll let you know how you can connect with us in this session. Uh, one of the question is, done BSc in hotel management and has seven years of study gap. Can I opt to study in Canada? Uh, so is that a gap you're being idle or you do you have any work experience or internship or any diploma courses, short term courses done? So or is that a very idle gap? Right. Uh, OK, hold on. Rest of questions we will ask in a while. But first of all, we'll just recap on all the documents that you require. If you have not filed for your passport, first thing is that go and get your passport done. You cannot even write your IELTS examination without an I, uh, passport. So the first thing first is the uh, uh, your passport. Uh, I believe that most of you have already completed your 10th, uh, 10th so 10th and 12th. So you need to uh, have your mark sheets. So Nakshiri, so is transcripts important or is uh, uh, are the universities also accepting just the mark sheets? Uh, everything we have to provide to the university with the semester wise mark sheets, we also require the transcripts. Okay, so we also require the transcripts. So what are transcripts? Can you give us a brief idea on what trans what are transcripts? So it is a consolidated mark sheet. So from your first to last semester mark sheets will be in one sheet of paper with the seal or signature of the controller of examiner, right? So this is also an important document. So you, if you're not having the transcripts at the moment, for example, you're having first to six semester mark sheets and you're still undergoing your bachelor's. In this case, we can send the applications with the uh, documents which we have as of now and later stage, we have to submit the transcripts. We might get a conditional offer mentioning so and so documents are pending. So once we provide those documents, they will be providing us the unconditional offer, right? So okay. we can proceed further, no harm. Let's not wait for the transcripts, but it, it is also an important document. Perfect. So all those who haven't collected your mark uh, transcripts and you are waiting for your applications, then you did not wait. You can start with your process as soon as possible so that you get a conditional offer letter from the university that you are applying for. Along with that, those who are applying for master's, yes, bachelor's degree certificate is also required. What if someone is in the final semester and does not have a degree certificate and a final year mark sheet? In that case, what they should be doing? So we can go ahead applying with the uh, documents which we have already and get a conditional offer from the university. Okay, the same as 10th and 12th mark sheet uh, transcript without the way they would apply without the transcript. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And backlog. Yes, backlog is again a very important uh, yeah, aspect right. nowadays. We come across a lot of students asking, are backlogs accepted? Are backlogs accepted? So what would you suggest over here, Nakshiri? So for those, I think we'll talk about both those who are already preparing and those who have already finished and have backlogs with them. So what is the suggestion you would give them? So who are undergoing your bachelor's, please try and avoid to have very less backlogs. Close to zero would be really, really good because you can apply for good universities. Some universities also have zero backlog criteria, right? So for these kind of universities, we might miss out in our options, right? So few of the universities are also accepting up to eight backlogs, but you have to compromise with the ranking of the university here. So avoid to have much backlogs and if you are already having backlogs, no worries. Try and have a good profile. Uh, do some internships or paper publications, any uh, journals if you want to, or uh, uh, any short-term courses if you want to take. Build your profile like this and let's apply with a strong statement of purpose as well. 
Correct. Wonderful. That was a wonderful tip. I did not know that this could be done. So all those who have backlogs, are there any people over here who have backlogs? Because I have recently come across almost around 50% of the students who apply, they do have one or two backlogs. So don't worry. In that case, you need to build up your profile. You can join internships. You can write uh, papers. You can present your papers. You can get certain publications and build up your profile in order to cover up on the backlogs that you have already had. Uh, what is VES and EC in ICAS? So these are certain uh, requirements from the university side. Not all the students have to stick on to this. As per the university requirement for a few of the universities, for example, they have three-year bachelors but want to apply for a university where they require four-year bachelors, right? For certain universities, there are best evaluation done. So once you guys get the listing from our side, we will mention what university has what requirement. So this is not for all the universities or all the countries. Don't need, no need to get panic, right? So once you start the process, we will explain you in detail. Yes. Uh, so I had, I already had a couple of students asking about that, which colleges would accept uh, three years graduation. So as Nakshari has already mentioned to you now that uh, there are some different colleges with different requirements. And in that case, you can get your VES or EC and ICS credit evaluation done. So for that, when you come for our one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling, I think the uh, educate, uh, sorry, the uh, counselors will guide you accordingly where you will require a VES certificate and where you can go for this without is only for usa uk accepts three-year bachelors ireland accepts three-year bachelors usa requires and canada requires this evaluation for three-year bachelors for uh, most of the universities so that will yes. be explained to you on case-to-case -case basis so all those who are applying for who want to go for a three years uh, with a three years bachelor's degree, UK and Ireland are the two best uh, options that you can go for. Uh, yes, so that was about uh, uh, your documentation requirement. And then at last comes your SOP, your statement of purpose. How many of you are yet to write your SOPs here? Let us know how many of I want to do MS in Canada. I have completed bachelor's in 2015 and I'm working as a software professional without any gap after completion of bachelor's. Am I eligible to go for master's now? Yes, you are eligible. Uh, your percentage. Germany, what about Germany? Arohi, today we are discussing Ireland and UK, but uh, of course we may take up your question in a little while. You are pursuing, uh, okay. I think, Sargam, your question has been answered. Ma'am, do re-attempt of a backlog counts? Of course, it counts. Yes, yes it counts. It does count. After 10, uh, two year gap and after 10th, okay, after 10th, he has done, he has had two years of gap and done three years diploma. Am I eligible to study in Canada? Mm, it, it is doubtful because we will ask why is the gap and what is your overall percentage in your diploma program? So whoever has a question for Canada, please do mention their percentage because it completely depends on the academics right so few of the universities with 70 percent and above also it is tough to get an admit right so please do so, mention your uh, percentage yeah so for us please mention your percentage for us to uh, give you a better answer how to get counseling they are asking how to get counseling role of work experience in masters after okay fine so that was about uh now let's discuss the sop i think uh uh yes. SOP is what we uh, we are coming to now. So what is right, SOP right. and what is the importance of it? Guys, uh, I would tell that this is the document which is really, really important for you all. Why? Because you can convey to the university what is running in your mind. Okay, so for example, you, you are having one or two backlogs, but you want to aim for a good university and you want to just give a try, right? So you can make your statement of purpose very interesting what you had done before, what is your future plan, why this particular country, why this university, so whether you are having any plans for research in future, all those things. For example, I had a student for pharmacy related program. Okay, so she did not have uh, 80, uh, 85, 90%, but he, she wanted to plan for a top university. So just she just mentioned in the SOP that she want to discover a drug for cancer. Okay, so that was one of the major highlight in the SOP because she had a vision. 
right? So your future prospects will also help you out. And we have SOP editors here who will be editing your SOPs, right? So who will beautify your SOP. You might write a draft, you might put across all the important points, but how it will be a final draft, you have to beautify, right? So we have experts who will be taking care of this. SOP will not only help you out getting an offer, it also helps you out getting the scholarships from the university side. So in UK, the scholarships around 1,000 to 6,000 pounds the students are getting. In Ireland, around 500 to 4,000 euros the students are getting. Canada, it is pretty tough because it is a competitive country and a PR nation as well. But yes, you can give a try if you're having a really wonderful profile. Right. So for Haas, who has done three years diploma, he's received 62 percentage. That's what he said. So will that be possible for Canada? 62% is fine. We can give a try for a couple of uh, colleges for post-graduation diploma program. But as you have year gaps, so you have to mention why is that gap or you have to provide the proof for the gap. So then it will be possible. There is a 50-50% chance in this case. Right. We have someone, who, Bhumi, who, as uh, Pooja always says, Badam student. So we have mm -hmm. a Badam student here, 94% in arts. Am I able to get, get a scholarship? Yeah, so it depends upon the country. If you are applying for UK universities, the Russell Group universities, there are chances your profile is also good, but not a huge scholarship. So if you want to apply for Manchester, Edinburgh, or Imperial, so Leeds University, Nottingham University, these kind of universities, it is competitive. You can get an offer, but to get a scholarship, you have to apply for the decent universities. Well, okay. Again, we have another Badam student. I have percentage in high 90s in class 10th and 12th with medical stream without maths with medical program. Which medical program would be the best? And also, are we automatically eligible for scholarships when we apply? Medicine related programs, so you can take up like clinical psychology, public health, healthcare management, these kind of programs. So it depends upon your course interests. We can connect one on one to have a uh, like discussion and then provide you the options. Right. So Arni, you need to connect with our counselors uh, one on one. And again, Kalyan PBS is asking which country is best for M Farm. Again, I guess. Articles. Yes, so first priority you can give to Canada. Second priority you can obviously give to Ireland. You have a lot of good companies and work exposure is really good in both the countries, right? So it, it is based on your percentage. What's the percentage, ma'am? Has he mentioned? No, he has not mentioned any percentage. He's only asking that. But okay. Have another so it, wonderful profile who is saying that 96 percentage in class 10th, 94 in 12th, PCM, 14, 10 in SAT, SATs, uh, 6.5 in IELTS, have four months internship experience. And so what is the chance for scholarship in USA? Scholarship chances are good uh, if you're applying early. October, the scholarship deadlines for most of the universities starts for USA. You have to hurry up. So you can check our website and start the next procedure. Okay, so that was about uh, the requirements, your requirements. All of you need a good, uh, rather I would say a higher academic profile in order to get to your top universities, your dream universities. However, if you have any kind of a backlog, you need to work on your entire uh, profile to build, you need to build up your profile so that you can cover up on the backlogs and you can still apply to good universities. So that was about the requirement. And now we come to the next one, that is cost of education and living how many of you are waiting for this point cost of education and living i think that is the first thing that comes to the mind when because uh, everyone started talking about finances and scholarships so how would how many of you want to know about that first of all type i in the chat box so that i get to know that you are also interested and waiting for us to explain your cost of living uh, uh, in these countries 94 and 12, can I get into tier one college? Aditya, I guess, possible. yes, <laughs> it is possible. Okay, so we'll directly go to the cost of education, Kiril. Yes, let's go and understand more onto that. So which country are we starting with, Nagshiri? So we can start with Canada. We can start with Canada. Yay, let's go to Canada first. So the first 
country is Canada, which we have this a lot the of pay. starting uh, tuition fee or the living expenses we have mentioned. It depends upon universities and also the locations, right? So this is the very starting uh, average, um, like uh, what we are having the tuition fee or the living expenses incurred, right? So let's go ahead with the tuition fees first, okay. right? You have okay. to speak with your parents. You need to be clear on the budget. If you're planning for 2022 September, you have a year, right? To start your financials. So first of all, the tuition fee starts from eight lakhs in rupees if we are taking. Right. So we are having top universities where the tuition fee is in between 20 to 25 lakhs as well. But to get started, we have from 8 lakhs. And the living that's for one year. That's yes, what we are mentioning that is for, for one year. year. Okay. Right. Yes. And the living expenses as Canada, it is like for all the places and for the visa purpose, it is 10,000 CAD, which we have to show in your GIC account, right? That is your graduate investment certificate account. So that is around 10,000 CAD, which will be around 5.6 to 5.9 lakhs, right? So it depends upon the INR and CAD, right? right. So, and the part-time jobs. So you can work 20 hours a week, right? So in all the countries, and when you are in the vacation period, you can work 40 hours a week, okay? So you can earn somewhere around eight to 12 euros or Canadian dollars or US dollars or, uh, pounds per hour when you are working for your part-time jobs, right? So you can take care of your living expenses for your food, stay, accommodation, your Wi-Fi, all these things, your transportation, you can take care, but you can't pay your tuition fee in this, okay? So most of the students will be having that, let me do work for part-time and let me gather some tuition fee. Uh, that is not possible, guys, the reality, right? You need to think about the reality when it comes to the funds. So you can also like work after your education and pay back your loans, but it is not possible in the part-time money. Right. So don't go to the country with the impression that you will be going there, doing some part-time work, and at the same time, you'll be able to pay for the entire semester fee. It may be partially possible, but may, we may not uh, we may not want to put you into a delusion that it is completely possible. For some, it may be, um, uh, they have their rel relatives staying over there. So they cut down on their accommodation and uh, accommodation over there because they are living with uh, people they know, their relatives over there and that's where they are able to do it but that's not true for everyone so please don't be into the delusion that you can work and pay the complete part-time fee yes definitely it will help you in uh, slashing your living expenses to a great extent but may not completely be helpful over there right, right. so yes of course you study well get good scores get a good job and then you get a full-time job and pay your fees down after that you can cover up on your loans even after that so is isn't that a good idea to do rather than to, you know, just wait and think that, okay, this is possible. This is not possible. People say also such things, but yes, both are true for Canada, but you need to uh, logically, rationally think what is the best for you. Right. So that was about Canada. Any queries on Canada, anything else to, that you would want to say? And here, yes, one more thing. Eight lakh is for one year and not for all the uh, two years or three years. It depends on your whether you're going for a UG, if you're going for a master's, it, be, it will be two years and that would definitely multiply the cost. Right. Yes, definitely. Okay. So that was for Canada and next country is then... Uh, we are talking about, okay, no, we'll go to the next previous countries only then, right? So first country that we have already discussed was Canada and now we are going to discuss UK. Yes. Yes, UK is also one of the uh, favorable destinations for most of the students, right? So you have all kind of courses in UK. So be it nursing or anything related to computer science or IT or anything related to pharmacy, fashion design, so civil, architecture, all of the courses are available at UK, right? So the tuition fee starts from 10 to 14,000, uh, uh, 10 to 14 uh, lakhs, right? So that will be really, really uh, helpful for the students who are having a little less budget in mind, but also aiming for a very good quality of education and a good university, 
right? And in UK, you also have most of the universities which has one year placements, right? So one year masters you have, after that few universities also have one year uh, placements, and then you are getting two years of stay back, right? So that will be really, really helpful for you guys. So universities like University of East London, University of West London, Hertfordshire, D. Montfort, or um, any university like Coventry, these universities has one year placement. So when you apply for UK, you can always give your first priority to universities with placements as you have good return on investment. And also you can extend your stay in the country for one more year. Right. Oh, that's excellent. I did not know that, that they can do this. So one year of, uh, so total they get three years of stay back then. Right, right. Oh, that's awesome. They can still get three years. So that is more than that in Canada or uh, I guess uh, other countries. Right. In Canada, like for post-graduation diploma program, few of the colleges like Lanton, Loyalist, Connors to Go, Centennial, they have co-ops, right? So one year co-op you have, there also you can extend your stay. So that is completely depends upon your priorities. You want to take up a master program, you have a good profile, or you are having around 65 to 68%, you're unable to apply for a master's, but you want to enter the country, you can keep PG Diploma as the channel and enter Canada. So, the living, uh, so that is about the tuition fees that it is 14 lakhs on an average for uh, one year uh, or the entire course. Is that for the entire course? I guess yes, most yes, of the for the entire course. For the entire course, that's amazing. So that is still and, less than that, uh, more or less similar to Canada. Right, right. So here at UK, we are applying a year before and having 70% and above, there are possibilities of getting good scholarships also. So one of my students with 72% for mechanical also got 4,000 pounds of scholarships. That was really amazing. So he saved a lot of money, right? So for all of you who are planning for UK, please start the process as early as possible. And yes, I'll start with the living expenses. So it completely depends upon the location here in UK. So outside London, the expenses will be around 9 lakhs per annum. Okay, so if you are in the London campus, it will be around 11,000 pounds, right? It is 11 lakhs per annum. So these are the living expenses which will be incurred. You have to be prepared with that. And uh, when it comes to the visa fee, it will be differing from year to year. So as of now, this is the price, 35,000 rupees. And when it comes to the part-time jobs, right? So as I explained you, 20 hours uh, per week and 40 hours in the vacation period, here also it is something similar, around eight to 12,000 pounds per hour. I'll come to the uh, part-time uh, like uh, discussion in the next slide. So I can explain you better in that. Okay. So living expenses in UK are a little higher as compared to Canada. However, the tuition fee and all the rest of the other things are almost similar. So you can check which suits you, which, whether it is UK, that is, uh, if you don't want to go for a two years course, and if you only want to go for a one year course, I think UK again is a wonderful option uh, for anyone who's willing to go to the country here. Uh, somebody's asking, okay, Nikhil is asking, what's a co-op program? What's a co co-op program that is internship program co-op is internship internship or placements only in canada they call it as co-op okay okay so in uk the fee is around 14 lakh which is more or less similar to that of canada so let's go and now check on to the third country in discussion that is ireland ireland is also one of the top destination for it pharmacy and anything related to management, international business, HR, finance, accounting, most of the hot courses, right? And the employability, employability rate is also really, really high in Ireland. So let me start with the tuition fee, guys. So the tuition fee starts from 12 lakhs, right? So there are a few universities with 10 lakhs of tuition fee as well, but you have to be prepared with the funding. So it starts from 10 lakhs up to 18 to 20 lakhs, it depends. So if you're applying for a top university, for example, Trinity College Dublin, University College Dublin, University College Cork, 
Dublin City University. So most of them have the tuition fee in between 16 to 20,000 euros per annum. And a few universities also has one year placement. Not all the universities in Ireland, very few universities and for particular programs. And when it comes to the programs, data science, uh, information technology, cybersecurity, cloud computing, these kind of courses are hot courses in Ireland. And a lot of IT companies, be it Intel, Deloitte, Simmons, um, most of the companies, Accenture, oh, they're hiring. Google. Yeah, Google. Most of them are hiring and they have uh, 15,000 to 20,000 plus vacancies, right? So now it's the right time for you to attack Ireland if you are an IT person, right? Yes. And also related to pharmacology, pharmaceuticals, drug development programs. So these programs are also really very good in Ireland. Okay. So, and when it comes to the living expenses in Ireland, so if you are in Dublin campus, it will be around 10,000 euros per annum. So if you're outside Dublin, then it will be around 8,000 euros per annum. So it, it ranges in between six to 10 lakhs. Okay, it completely depends upon the location. And when it comes to few universities like University College Cork or Limerick University, most of the courses, they require zero backlogs. Right. So yes, Ireland is highly academic oriented country. Right. So they will ask for a higher uh, score in academics. Again, no backlogs, the least backlog. So if you want to go to Ireland, you need to really buck up on your academics. Yes, right. Definitely. So when it comes to the part time here, here also we can expect something similar around eight to 10 euros per hour. So 20 hours, we can work. So, and when it comes to the part-time jobs, you have to equally have a, a internship kind of thing with your odd jobs in all the countries. That will be helpful for you to build your career as well. Okay, so we are getting a lot of questions on scholarships for all the three countries, UK and Canada and Ireland as well. So shall we touch upon the scholarship now or are we going to the next question that is part-time jobs and scholarships together? Yes, yes, we can go ahead with part-time jobs and uh, after that we can go ahead with the scholarships as it is a huge topic. Yeah. Now, please pay attention. Yes, Tanisha, we will take up your question in a little while. There are a lot of students who want to uh, want us to take their questions. But first, let us uh, okay discuss on the part time jobs. And then because that your question is very specific, we can come to that in a while. So this is a very important uh, question, uh, important aspect that can uh, uh, that can change the way you are perceiving to go to a country or perceiving a course in a country, and you that will mentally prepare you for your all your finances, considering that you have some amount and what other amount you need to be prepared for or what you can earn while you are staying in these countries. Yes, Nakshin. Yes, uh, guys, in all the countries part-time job is really, really important for a student to build their career or for their survival, for their living expenses, right? So most of the students also get deviated to odd jobs. So 24 hours, like they will be just targeting on the restaurants or supermarkets or any uh, pubs, petrol pumps or McDonald's, Domino's, these kind of places, right? But Yes, you have to work in these places as well, but also concentrate on your internship. If you're doing 15 days internship, one month internship, that will add on to your CV. So when you go and stand for your full-time job in front of your employer and you have a great CV, that will be really, really helpful for you. And in all the universities, you have a cell, right? So they will be helping you out in this CV preparation. So in the entire preparation when it comes to interviews, what all questions they might ask you, how you have to answer those questions, how your body language should be, how you need to prepare your CV. The student self is completely into that. So make use of that. And you also have Indian communities who might share few references when it comes to the job. So you have to approach them as well. And uh, when it comes to the internships, if you are having two to three internships also that is sufficient, that, that can completely help you. They can understand that, yes, the student knows about Ireland job market. He has already worked with so-and-so companies as an intern, right? So getting a full-time job will be really, really easier for you. 
so when it come to comes to any engineering computer science or civil or uh, mechanical any of these fields the starting pay the students are getting in ireland is around 45000 euros per annum so in uk it will be around 45 to 50000 pounds per annum in canada also it will be around 50 to 60000 cad per annum so this is what your vision has to be so when you get a full time job you that that is what you are looking for the return on investment or for your career growth to repay your educational loans right so these things you should also be really really proactive so take your time take one month time get adjusted to the location so check what all you have in the surroundings what all companies you have uh, and then you can start with the job hunts you should be really really proactive guys so what next off campus on campus you can just click on off campus okay so off campus jobs so these are the odd jobs which you can uh, like look into when you are studying like 20 hours a week so as i explained you before the restaurants pizza hut petrol pump supermarkets so this will also help you out for your livings and the other are that is on campus jobs in your university library or university canteen teaching assistant call center laboratories so these kind of jobs you can also look into and in the career sales student sales also you can start if you get an opportunity right so on campus jobs always you might get a little less pay compared to the odd jobs but no problem till you get adjusted to the location you can start working on campus Okay. So, so how, yeah. So how they would be able to search their jobs? That is the next question that arises. Yes, right. So we have certain job portals in each countries, right? So you can just put your updated CVs online in uh, certain good job portals, and also when it comes to the offline, you can check if there is a drop box in. front of any of the shops or restaurants or any of the companies you can drop your cvs and one of the major thing here is uh, most of the times the fortune 500 companies will be conducting the education uh, or the job fairs right so the job fairs you you can go and attend you can put your cvs you might get a call from them right so you have to be proactive as i told you before online or offline you have to keep your cvs ready so okay so we were here we were we discussed the part time jobs in ireland in uk and canada off campus on campus job hunting sites how to get your jobs and so on so that's how you can uh, fund your expenses so that was about uh, the uh, countries that we are discussing today that is ireland canada and uh, of course uh, uk so now we have one question that uh, uh, kalyan was asking initially i think he was asking for m farm so his percentage is 90 Six in tenth, ninety five in twelfth, eight point three CGPA in bachelors, which is the best country for M farm. Badam student, another one. <laughs> Pharmacy. Yes, I definitely give an option for Ireland, Canada. So for your profile, we can start the process immediately, right? So universities like University of Toronto, McGill University, University of Gulf, Brock University, McMaster, and when it comes to Ireland, Technological University of Dublin. and um, dit also which is technological university of dublin now trinity college dublin university college dublin and it carlo also have drug development program so it completely depends upon your profile so these two countries on the priority and uk also some of the rezl group universities you can target right So, uh, what is the score for studying in Canada, a uh, USA? Akash, let us know what exactly you are looking for in your score. Score. Sargam is asking that in Canada, are the co-op jobs paid? Yes, it is paid. So you have to finish your two-year or one-year diploma program, post-graduation diploma program, and then you will be getting the co-op. So, which will be a paid program. and tanisha is asking us that what are some of the good universities in canada for masters in culinary arts culinary arts okay so for which intake you are looking for tanisha you need to let us know your intake so that we can guide you accordingly 
Yes, Tanisha, you can get into one-on-one -on -one discussion with your CV, with all your uh, requirements, with all your uh, academic details. We can get back to you with the discussion and the listing. Yes, Farhaz is asking, is IELTS necessary for UK? So, yes, it is necessary. I, uh, it is necessary for UK as well. Pakshal, oh, Pakshal, I want to yeah, do... For Pakshal. the previous question, like for most of the universities, very few universities, they are waiving off IELTS if the student has uh, a good score in 12th, right? And the 12th should also not be very old score. So in between four to five years of gap only, it should be. So if the student is having 80 uh, and above in English, then they might waive off, but not in all the universities. You might get uh, the options reduced if you are not taking IELTS. So if you're having that IELTS score, proper score, you can apply for any university in UK. So don't uh, like restrict yourself to apply for very less universities or very mediocre universities. Bachelors, as Nikhil is asking, he's a bachelor's in CS with 9.4 CGPA working from last one year, been good throughout academics. Can you please suggest a few top universities in Canada? In Canada for computer science program. So you can apply for, uh, what's the percentage? 9.4 uh, okay, okay, CGPA. Okay. British Columbia, you can definitely apply. McMaster, McGill, Waterloo, Saskatchewan, Dalhousie, most of them. So your profile is eligible. Just start working on your IELTS. If you're having 7, 7.5 and above, you can target for the ambitious universities as ambitious universities require those scores. With 6.5, it is not possible. Abdul Ahad is asking, ma'am, I got 9.1 CGPA in my UG. Can I go to UK top university colleges like UCL, KCL, college for master's course? Yes, it is possible. Just start with your IELTS and have a very strong statement of purpose. Okay, Shriya, for that, you should come one-on-one -on -one with our uh, uh, with our counselors. How can they connect with our counselors, Nakshri? Any link or any yes, email? Yes, can drop an email for uh, spot counseling email ID. We can share it on the chat box. I will share it over here, first of all. Let me just share it here on the screen. I'll write it down on the screen if I can. Okay. Okay, I will share it. I'll share it over here in the chat. What is the ID, Nakshri? It's leap, uh, just a minute. Spotcounseling.com. Spot counseling single L? Yeah, it's spotcounseling at leapfinance.com. S-P-O-T-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-L-I-N-G at leapfinance.com. Hey guys, anyone who's looking for a counseling can write an email to spotcounseling at leefinance.com. We would definitely love to take your queries one on one and uh, 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 whatever is uh, uh, Kamali, Kamali Singh, can we do interior designing as masters with an engineering degree in UG? Um, they require any like work experience or how you develop the interest because we are changing the domain. Right, so USA and Canada, they, know, they do not accept domain change cases. If we are applying for UK also, they require any work experience, internship or any courses related to that field. So you can also have a one-on-one -on -one counseling. We can give you better options. Okay. So you can just mention- Yeah, yeah, go ahead. That you had attended the session on YouTube for, of Manisha Ma'am and Nagasri Nagarath session and then share your details and your requirement. We will get back to you. The team member will get in touch with you. Okay, so you need to mention in your email that you attended today's session. That uh, That's how you, they will connect with you. They'll take up your queries on priority. We have one Hiral who's been asking us for quite long that 80% and 12 currently doing her BSc Biotechnology. She's, in the, she's a first year student. What GPA is needed for opting MSc in USA? Okay, so with 70% and above, there are possibilities. If you have a good profile and a good GRE score also, 320 and above, you can get placed in the top universities. 
somebody was asking question on uh, what is better dentistry or uh, physiotherapy so that completely depends upon your course interest because if you are interested and if you are clearing that then only you can reach great heights right so it is not suggested by my side pakshal has done his bachelor's in mass media and what will be his requirements for masters in the similar field in the usa so you need to have uh, something around 65 uh, percentage and above gre score if you are having 300 minimum and 320 and above uh, will be a good score for the scholarship so 300 and above is the minimum score required for the gre so ielts and gre are the requirements uh, uh, Vamsi, you need to write an email to the uh, to Leap Scholar, and you can get a one-on-one -on -one counseling where they'll let you know uh, universities based on your course. I'm already completing my MBA. Any option to go abroad? Oh, okay. So you have already done with your MBA. So you can go ahead with UK for some other option into management itself. But uh, one more MBA will not be possible. It would be a visa refusal. So we can guide you. We need to check the year of passing. What all, What is your previous education? The entire profile, your master's, bachelor's, 10th, 12th, work experience or internships, all these things we have to check. So for you, as of now, UK only is the country. Canada and US, not possible. Yeah. So the next question was, uh, I think, uh, okay, Vin J is asking, ma'am, which is the best country for pilot training among the three that we discussed today? So UK, you can go ahead as the first option than Canada because Canada, very few universities are there. UK, you have more universities for options and the quality of education is really, really good in both the countries. So just have the proper percentage academic requirement that will be helping you. Right. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, we, will, we are sharing the email ID. Tanisha, hold on. We are sh sharing the email ID again with you all. Sargam is asking, what is the difference between PG diploma and master's degree? Post-graduation diploma is level eight program, Sargam. So, and your master program, your MBA or MSc will be level nine program. So there is a difference. When it comes to the PR prospects, also master's and PG di diploma has certain point system, which you can also check on, uh, you can do your research, right? So these are the two major differences. PG diploma is completely skilled based program and your masters, your MSc will be completely like if you're taking technical stream, it will be uh, MSc and if you're taking management, it will be MBA or MS in management, these kind of programs. Right. So Gayatri, what are the good universities for marketing in UK? For marketing, you can uh, always like apply for most of the top universities, the Russell Group universities, based on your profile. Can you quickly tell me about your profile? Uh, Gayatri, please let us know more on your profile uh, for PG. Okay, now I have Brunel this university, question. University of Bath, Cardiff Metropolitan, University of South Wales, uh, Cranfield, University of East London. Most of them completely depends upon your uh, profile as well. And guys, whoever like are interested to know about the funds, what all funds you can show, how your profile should be, you can just mention yes. We just have few minutes now. Yeah, please mention yes if you want to know about the funds. Ma'am is going to give you some more, uh, some important and surprising information. So if you are all willing to know about this, just type yes in the chat box. One of the major requirement is funds, right? So your documentation, IELTS, SOP, all the other academic documents, your application is filled, submitted, you got an offer. Now you want to go, want to go ahead with the visa process, right? So for that, what is the major requirement? Funds, right? So your tuition fees, your living expenses is the student showing properly. What is the visa success? All these things. This is the major requirement, which you have to speak with your family, your parents, right? So this is the right time if you're planning for September intake to kickstart with your finances. So they all have typed yes, 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 yes. That's yes. awesome, guys. So a few things which you have to discuss with your parents. Take a paper and pen. I'll let you know. You can just mark it out. Come on. Yeah. So we are giving you Firstly, 30 seconds. Get a paper and a pen. And then ma'am is going to give you certain tips. You need to write them down in order to understand what you should and how you should find. So only 30 seconds for you all. Come on. Come on. We'll wait for 30 seconds. 
All of you all, go and grab your paper very quickly. Prajwal, yes, Ramakrishna, can you please give some guidance about facility management course in Canada after doing BSc Hospitality Management from Delhi Scope? Okay, we'll do that after ma'am shares her, uh, her surprise tips on funds. So are you all there? If you're all there, type yes. So yours is three-year or four-year bachelor's uh, who is looking for hospitality management? Uh, she's from Delhi, so I think three years bachelor's, BSc okay. hospitality management. Okay. Ready. Okay, so they're all ready with their pen and papers. Yeah, we can share. Yeah. So first thing is check with your parents whether they are filing IT returns, income tax returns, right? So two to three years of income tax returns should be there when it is for the visa. So the visa success will be high if you are having this document. And next thing, whether your parents are having proper funds, that is if they are having any PF, if they're still working, they might also have PF, check with them. And if they are having any fixed deposits, LIC policies, mutual funds, all these things you can make a note if they are having. And uh, when it comes to the major funding, if you are falling in short, so for example, you had some five lakhs with you and the others you want to get funding, right? So that will be your educational loans, right? So you just need to uh, present few of your documents, your parents' civil scores, your IT returns, what they are working, all these things and you also can get to know how much of educational loans you will be getting for your profile. So have, a, have in mind that you are having a tuition fee in between 10 to 15 lakhs, right? So per year and uh, on top of that, how much you have to take the loan, everything. So these are the important funds which you can show fixed deposit, PF, mutual funds, uh, LIC policies and your educational loans. IT returns are the important documents. If your parents are not filing IT and if they are in agricultural background, what documents you have to get? Everything we will let you know once you start the process with us, right? So at Leap Scholar, we will be helping you out right from your IELTS coaching, your application process, which involves your documentation, your uh, SOP editing, your application filling, submission, follow up with the university, getting you an offer. Once you get the offer, we'll be filing your visas, what all finances you have to show, what all documents required for the visa. Major thing is the mock session for visa. So how you have to speak in the visa, if they're asking any questions, how confident enough you have to be, we will be training you. And once you get the visa also, we will share a few of the contacts who are already in that particular country. This is what Leap Scholar is helping you out. And Leap Scholar also has Leap Scholar scholarships, guys. So that will be given to the students who are filling their applications and submitting through Leap Scholar. Who are doing their application through Leap Scholar is only eligible to apply for the scholarships. And we have students from uh, like who have got the scholarships in between 2000 US dollars up to 20,000 US dollars. That is a really important and really very good news for you all I know. So that was about your entire dream to going to universities like Ireland, UK and Canada. Ma'am has already mentioned to you how you should get your documents ready. For the others who, who uh, whose parents don't file uh, ITRs, for them you need to get in touch with our super expert counselors who are going to guide you throughout your journey. Yes, we also help you to, for your SOPs and can GIC be used after a few months as proof of funds? How can GIC be used? Yes, that will be only like uh, once you uh, pay the tuition fee to the university or the college and you are ready to file your visas, then it has to be done. 
So now that you have a lot of information on these three countries, the cost, the part-time education, uh, the part-time work that you can do, the documents that are required. So make a note of all of these and do show us your love by liking the session and subscribing to our channel and also uh, sharing it with your friends who are also willing to go abroad. So share our this session and like our session and please connect us with uh, uh, on our email ID for your uh, further queries right now Shri? yes yes guys all the best for you all and uh, see you on the other side so we can help you out in the entire process just write an email to spot counseling at leapfinance.com with the queries we can connect with you one on one and also get started with the process so see you again in another informative sessions where we are going to talk about, of course, many of you have been asking for Germany. So we'll keep a note of it that next time we come up with more information on Germany as well. So till then, keep us, uh, keep watching, keep sharing, keep liking our sessions and we will be there with more, more, more such sessions for you all. Thank you, Anima. Thank you so much. Neelam, thank you. Sargam, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you, guys. Bye. All the best.